Lower blepharoplasty. Too young? Are there better options? Fillers? Lasers? I have had a couple surgeries before. During these consults, I mentioned a lower lid blepharoplasty. The doctor stated I was too young, 2930. I am now almost 32 and still so completely bothered by my lower lids bags. I seem to always look exhausted and look older than my real age, wrinkles. So I am looking for some honesty here. When is a good age? Am I too young? Is this something that I would benefit from? Look younger, more rested? Is there a better option for me? Fillers? Lasers? Thank you for your question. You've submitted two photos and you state in your question that you have undergone previous surgeries and when you had discussed the possibility of addressing the puffy appearance of your under eye area, the under eye bags, prior that you were told that you were too young. And this was when you were 29, 30. You're now 32 years old and you are looking for answers on when is the right age and as well as some options such as fillers and lasers. Well, I can certainly give you my experience and my approach to patients like yourself in my practice. I'll give you a little background. I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and dealing with under eye bags is something we do all day every day in our practice. So I'll give you a little bit of a, um, an understanding as to first what your issue is and then what our approach is based on the anatomy of this, this area. So to begin with, the appearance of puffy under eye bags is based on an anatomic issue called lower eyelid fat prolapse. What this means is fat that's normally around the eyes pushes forward, creates these bulges. Now, many years ago, the solution was fairly straightforward. It would always be surgery, and then it became a question of when to do the surgery, and that question was always tempered with what is an appropriate relative risk when you think of how the surgery is being performed, and I'll go into detail about that um, further. But now we're in a time, we live in a time when we have a variety of additional tools in our toolbox so which does include also injectable fillers, such as a hyaluronic acid filler. So to begin with, once you understand that it's a hernia of fat, anything that addresses that would be from one direction about reduction and the other direction about blending. So in my practice, when we see a patient like yourself, if the fat pockets are very subtle, and only push out a certain amount, a limited amount, then hyaluronic acid fillers, such as Restylin, have some value in a blending type of strategy. Now the challenge is, is not to put more than is appropriate because otherwise it can make the under eye bag look worse. Many people come to my practice to have these under eye bag areas treated after they've gotten injectable fill fillers by a well-meaning doctor but unfortunately they had so much filler that it made their bags look worse and we actually use an enzyme called hyaluronidase to dissolve that filler and see what the real anatomy is and then do a more definitive procedure. Now the definitive procedure is a procedure where the fat is reduced sculpted or repositioned or combination. And that procedure in my practice generally for someone young like yourself is a transconjunctival blepharoplasty. What that means is what I do is reduce and reposition and sculpt the fat from the inside of the eyelid. This way you actually have a more definitive long-term benefit. One thing I didn't mention about fillers is fillers by nature have to be consistently repeated. Now that's fine when you have a situation where there isn't a better surgical option than to use fillers and there are many situations like that. Under eye bags is not one of them. When, uh, when someone has beyond a certain threshold of fat prolapse 
it is most optimal to just do a surgical procedure. Now when it comes to the question of age, there are going to be opinions by a lot of doctors on what they believe. And from, from my perspective, the age that is optimal is when you have the problem. So we have operated on patients as young as 14 years old who had significant under eye bags. Now that's more of an exception. I would say that in your age range it is perfectly fine. We routinely address lower eyelid fat pockets in people in their 20s and older. So certainly your age is not a limiting factor here. Now in terms of the relative risk that I was discussing earlier, for many surgeons the only way they do this operation is under general anesthesia. General anesthesia means that a tube is placed in your throat and you are paralyzed. And so with that understanding, a lot of people are hesitant to do surgery. More than 20 years ago, I developed systems in my practice so that we can do these procedures under local anesthesia. In our practice, uh, where we are in Manhattan and Long Island, we have accredited uh, surgical facilities, so we actually do these procedures with a little bit of sedation. A little bit of sedation gives you enough relaxation, but at the same time, you're not under general anesthesia. So for our patients, w their main desire is to maximize the, the results, have, um, some, do, do it in a safe way, and recover as quickly as possible. So when we do these procedures, we also will use technology, regenerative technology, such as platelet-rich plasma. This is basically the healing and growth factors concentrated from your own blood, which activate your own stem cell activity to improve skin quality and texture, as well as facilitate healing from the surgery. Last but not least, for someone who has lighter skin, we often also use something called fractional CO2 laser or fractional erbium laser to help improve the skin quality texture from the epidermal and dermal side from the exterior. So we basically try to do a global rejuvenation of the eye area. We address the fat pockets, we address the tissue quality with platelet-rich plasma, and we improve the color and quality and crepiness of the skin with laser. Now, now, in order to really determine what is optimal for you, a proper evaluation is necessary. And as I said, with the surgical option, people go back to work typically in less than a week. So I would advise that you meet with qualified experienced specialists, surgeons who can offer both injectables and surgical options, look at their before and afters, learn about the way they like to do their procedures, see if you're comfortable with the aesthetic style, with the approach, with the anesthesia, and of course ultimately with the results that you see in their, their individual before and after pictures. And also understand that there, there are additional complementary procedures that benefit where one actually adds to the other to the point where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And that's where the PRP and the fractional laser uh, procedures come in. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.